Okay, so I'd like to look at a problem given a um, distribution of an electric charge, all right? So what I want to look at is um, some kind of a disk. So I'm going to look at a representation, uh, just something like this. It's a disk in um, somewhere in three-dimensional space, just like that. It's a two-dimensional disk in a three-dimensional space, all right? And what I want is to have that disk have a radial charge distribution. So by radial charge distribution, I mean that it's going to have um, some charge density sigma, okay? So that's a surface charge density sigma uh, that goes up to a um, maximum of sigma naught. Um, at the uh, radius here. So if this is the radius of our disk from zero. So it'll do something like this. And I want it to be sort of an exponential decrease to zero. So that's what we'd like to write down as um, our given, right? So I'm going to take this charge distribution and find the total charge, basically. So we're, so we're going to take this two-dimensional charge distribution and find the total charge on the disk. Um, so we're given a flat disk. And I'll use a C. Um, with a charge distribution. Uh, sigma of r is equal to sigma naught times some something, right? Um, and basically what I want to do is have right here at r um, whatever's in here be 1 and whatever's here uh, be 0. So um, at if I take a um, exponential of 2, 2 of r over r, that here is 2 and that here is 1. So at big R, that's uh, 2 to the 1 is 2. At little r equals 0, right? Then um, 2 to the 0 is 1. Then if I just subtract the 1 there, I have um, basically this function. What I just said, um, exponential decrease from sigma naught to 0 at the center. And again, I want to find the total charge. This is something nice and simple, something that you can that you can do for fun at home, right? So let's let's just call that a concept of um, a charge density. Okay, and the equation that we use to figure all that stuff out is Q is equal to the um, double integral over the area of this disk of sigma of um, some point inside the disk, dA. Okay, so basically we're just adding up all the little pieces here. That That's all. It's not a um, major issue. Um, the strategy then, uh, first let that strategy would do some setup. So in a type D problem you don't have any place to do your setup other than in the strategy section. I mean that's part of your strategy is set setting up your um, coordinate system and so forth. Um, so we'll put the disk in the xy plane. And we'll center it at, center it at the origin. We don't really have to change very much there to do that. Um, to, then we're going to want to set up the integral. And uh, we can do that in we can do that in um, Cartesian coordinates. It's easier in cylindrical co coordinates. So let's just use cylindrical coordinates. Um, so we're here for less time. Uh, and three, then we just execute to find Q. Okay. 
Okay. Um, and then let's see the answer. So we want to do this integral. Um, in cylindrical coordinates, we go from 0 to r, and we go around in a circle. So let's do the circle 0 to 2 pi, 0 to big R. Um, we integrate this sigma, which is just this thing, so that's sigma naught 2 r over r minus 1. Not too difficult. Um, this dA in um, cylindrical coordinates is r d theta times dr. Okay, so r d theta dr. Uh, easiest to hit this with, um, you know, distributing distributing everything out. So I guess first uh, have to match these guys up. So r and theta. So we need to match up these limits of integration with these, so inner, outer. Um, let's see, so it's easiest to, to go ahead and distribute the integral sign. Uh, first of all, though, we can just integrate through theta. There's no theta dependence, so we just have 2 pi. We can go ahead and pull out the sigma naught as well. So now we have that times the integral from 0 to r of r times 2r over r dr. And then we subtract off the integral from 0 to r of little r dr. Um, this we'll want to do integration by parts. Um, so u, the function u should then be um, r so that du can be equal to dr and the function dv should be equal to uh, 2r over r dr and that means the integral, the function v is the integral of that so it's r over the natural log of 2 times 2r over r. Okay, everything's going pretty simple there. So when we do this integral, um, we have 2 pi sigma naught. Uh, this guy becomes um, uv, right? So r over ln 2 of r times 2r over r evaluated at 0 and big R minus the integral from 0 to R of these guys, which is just R over ln 2, 2R over R times dr minus uh, the integral of this thing, which is 1 half R squared. Okay, so we're cruising along nicely there. Um, if we evaluate this thing at big R, this is R times 2, I think. So we have 2 pi sigma naught. At big R, we have um, 2 R squared over ln 2. Um, at 0, 0, right? Here, um, we integrate this again. We already did that before. That's going to be r squared over ln 2 squared. And this thing, we've already got the 1 half r squared. Um, so we've got a bunch of cons constants. So we have, um, let's see, what do we have? 2 over ln 2 minus... 1 over ln 2 squared minus 1 half times 2 pi sigma naught r squared. Um, so actually, actually looking at this, getting this number, I don't know if that's positive or negative offhand. It should be positive because um, you know, everything here for the sigma is positive, unless, unless sigma naught is negative, obviously. 
Um, but if we actually evaluate that, type that in, put it into our calculator, we get something like 0 0.304 times 2 pi sigma naught r squared. And, you know, that has the right units because this guy here has units of coulombs per meter squared. This guy has units of meters squared, so we have units of coulombs, which is right for the charge. Pretty simple. Um, this is one half of what you're going to be doing when you're looking at Gauss's Law problems. Uh, I'll be back in just a second.